Amen. Last weekend, we were in Sunny, what do you call that your place? <laughs> Obago, Okunano. The crowd shocked me. They were about 50,000. I asked to know why the crowd was so much. They said native doctors had threatened me to deal with me. And as we arrived, it began to rain in that area. But as I said to God, let this rain relocate and go to where the native doctors are and let them die one after another. <laughs> My prayer tonight is that you may ask God to reveal to you the greatness of our God. Just ask him to show you what this God can do. I'm amazed that this God can. We had another program close to that place where a man said to me that I had no right to preach without his permission. <clears throat> and I said to him, for saying what you have just said, you are going to fall under the anointing. And while you are sleeping, we will cut your hair and make you look handsome. Tomorrow morning, you will die. <laughs> when he fell under the anointing and we began to cut his hair, I was so amused. The man that said he had power found that he had no power right where you are. I'm going to preach my best sermon. <laughs> Take your seat, bring out your Bible, bring out your notebook, bring out your pen. To write what you hear is to remember the important things you heard. <laughs> Let's give a clap offering to Apostle who came all the way from Port Harcourt to he and his wife. May God bless them in Jesus' name. We are going to the book of Psalms, chapter 115. Verse 13 through 12. I mean, verse 12 through 13. The Lord had been mindful of us. Right where you're sitting. I don't think you have heard that beautiful Bible line before. The Bible says, this God is mindful of you. That is, he thinks about you. You are important to him. That is, you are precious to me. How many of you are happy to hear what I've just said now? That you are precious to God and you are important to him and he's mindful of you. That is, he worries about you. Anybody who is happy to hear that? Then raise your hand and say hallelujah, let me hear <laughs> Today, for the first time, I heard my wife get angry. She said, um, native doctors in our village tried to kill me. Yes, um, when people try to kill you, it is because you are important. They don't kill idiots. Huh? <laughs> the funny thing was as they got closer to me they now saw 1,000 soldiers and they ran I was amused because I didn't see any soldier 
Men and brethren, we serve he who is awesomely awesome. There is almost nothing he cannot do for you. And this night, every problem in your life is now in trouble. The Bible says the Lord has been, has been mindful of you. And he will bless you. you now tell somebody, this God shall bless me this night. No, say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. <laughs> the second time I went to heaven, God asked me, Oma, what are you doing here? You have 34 more years to preach. And, and I asked him, so I have not come home. He said, stop. You have never disobeyed me. All these years I've known you. Return to the world and finish your preaching. As I turned, I found my wife by my side crying. But I, why are you crying? She said, the doctor that owned the hospital said I will soon die. Tell him I'll slap him. The man that made heaven and earth said I have more years to preach. And a small doctor now tells me I will soon die. Tell him I'll kick him in the nose. He will remember the mother's name. Right where you are. He who made this heaven and the sky and the waters you see says he wants to bless you this night. Right where you're sitting this night, there's a plan by God to bless you. And to increase you and multiply you. Are you still here? Then raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody. Read on. Who is reading for us? The Lord had been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will I, I like that beautiful line. He will bless us. Can Tell, tell somebody by your side, he will bless us. Please try and wear a smile. Wow. Go on, sir. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord. All those who fear the Lord in this hall. You have an appointment with God this night. He will bless you. No, I, I want to see you smile. Stop doing this Nigerian thing. I want to see you smile. Smile like a Cheshire cat. Smile like you're happy. Let your enemies know you are alive. Huh? My mother used to laugh like locomotive engine. When I, when I shout... I said to her, Ma, you're already 96. Why are you laughing like a small girl? She'll look at me and say, I want to tell my enemies I'm still alive. How many of you would like to tell your enemies that you're still alive? Wow. Then shout and say, I'm still alive. <laughs> there are those who hate you. But beginning tonight, they will not harm you in any way. Read on, sir. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. This God will already, by being a born again child of God, you have the evidence of one that fears the Lord. And, the, and this Bible says, This God has your name among those who will bless this night. Wow. How many of you are happy to hear that God has your name written down? Among those that you will bless tonight. Read on, sir. The Lord shall increase you more and more. Yeah. You and your children. Yeah. What does that mean for God to increase you? It shows somebody you don't know very well. 
will bring you a gift of a beautiful means of mobility, a good car. It means all the bachelors, the girl that God will show you to marry will be an intelligent, great cook. A girl that will make your life pleasurable and comfortable. She will supervise your every food. Read on, sir. Ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. The Bible says you are already blessed of the Lord. And we're talking about he who designed this sky and this earth. And every river you know, including our own river. How many of you would like to go with a speedboat to Calabar from Oro? Do you know, I, I'm in love with, with rivers. I, I just, I feel, I wish I could live by the river and go to Calabar from Oron every day. But my wife will not allow me. This God, the maker of heaven and earth, has a plan to increase you. How many of you will tell your immediate neighbor this night? That the maker of heaven and earth has a plan to increase you, you, you. Tell somebody. And you will tell to bong member. I'm in my yo man in kwe. And you will tell to Jehovah. Ami moyo, ami kwe. moyo, ami moyo, ami kwe. Ani o mo ni Ami moyo, ami kwe. Ani o wo ni Ami moyo, kwe. Ami moyo, kwe.
The Bible says the blessings of the Lord will be the beginning of your increase. I was greatly excited when a man brought me a jeep and said, don't buy any jeep again. When you want any jeep, call me. Tell me the name of the one you want. I'll bring it to you. Okay, who will pay? He said, I'll pay. <laughs> How many of you would like somebody to say that to you? Let's see the book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 2. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. There are two things God will do for you beginning today through Christmas. He will call you, already has called you to follow him. He will now bless you to show that he is now your father and you are God. I don't know if you know, the way you dress will determine how people will address you. You will no longer wear a Okrika work up. You, everyone listening to me tonight, okay, with that man going up and down. He's a headmaster. God is going to change your dress. I was invited to preach in Abraba, 1972. On arrival, the leaders, the elders of that community walked up to me and said, we don't like your dress. We don't like the car that brought you. We want you to find somewhere. We'll bring you dresses. We'll bring you a car. We'll bring you a policeman to escort you. We want to change what they're wearing. I thought of showing anger, but I said to myself, no, I will not show any sign of anger. This is what heaven calls God changing your wardrobe. Tell somebody by your side, God will change your wardrobe this night. Come, how many of you would like God to change your wardrobe? Anybody here? Wow. 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 In 1980, no, in 1987, I returned to Abreba and they said to me, what can we do for you that nobody had done for you before? Hey, can you people pay for a helicopter to save me for eight days? They said, consider it done. We'll make the money available tomorrow. This God I please must punish poverty. The God I preach has good news for you. He will change your, your dress. I hope you know where to buy a good dress. Huh? Yes, sir. Wow. Let's go on. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 17. We'll take verse 1 through verse 2. I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect and I'll make my covenant between you and me and I'll stand in Covenant. When you enter into a covenant with God, God is simply saying, What I have is yours. Hey, how many of you like God to say to you, Whatever I have is yours? Wow. <laughs> 
Beginning this night, your life will change. What? Your life will change. And every stone anybody shall throw at you will now become your own stepping stone to greatness. I want you to hear me. Any sickness in your body this night is in trouble. Because that sickness will not be allowed to continue to exist. This God will take away every sickness, every pain. Every movement of the enemy in your body shall be taken away. I want to ask, how many of you are willing to allow God to take away every sickness, every affliction, every pain from you? Wow. Why don't we see the book of Exodus chapter 23, 25 and 26. What does he say, sir? And ye shall serve the Lord your God. If ye shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless thy bread and thy water. He will bless water. your bread and your water. I Wait. How many of you would like God to bless your bread and your water? Wonderful people. Go on, sir. And I will take sickness away from thee. Right where you are sitting tonight. You have just been told the best news ever that God will take away sickness from you. Yeah. Sickness is an enemy. Sickness insults us. Sickness abuses us. Sickness will not allow you to sleep well. Sickness will not allow you to eat well. But this night, there is an announcement in heaven that God will take away your own sickness from you. Right where you're sitting, every sickness is bound to obey God. How many of you would like God to take away your sickness from you? <laughs> I was flown 22 years ago. I was flown to London for them to find out what my sickness was. And they said to me, we saw no sickness, only you don't know how to rest. Is that all? They said yes. <laughs> this is great news. They said, give, give us back the bed we gave you and the room we gave you. Uh, you two, give me back the money I gave you. I gave you 175 pounds. They said, that's your punishment for not knowing how to rest. Men and brethren, I cried. And I still with that money. When I return again to London, I'll ask for that money. Huh? Hey, I'm an African. I'm a Nigerian. Already they have said in London, when you arrest a Nigerian, don't allow him to think. Because he will outwit you. Right where you are. Every sickness hiding anywhere in your body is under instruction to leave you alone. Answer. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you reading? Exodus Chapter 23. 17, huh? verse 1 through 2. Please, that's where I want you to read. He said, I am the and almighty God. Okay. Walk before me, and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and you. And I will multiply you exceedingly. How many of you would like God to multiply you exceedingly? I like that grammar. Right where you are to now, whatever you lay your hand to do shall prosper. God has a plan to, to, to multiply you. What does that mean? You will not wear one trousers anymore. You are going to have so many trousers. You will not have a place to pack all of them. How many of you are like that every time you step out of your house, you will be wearing a new dress? Anybody here? Yes, Tell the Lord what you want. Because God is going to 
multiply you and increase you and bless you with what others are looking for. But the, I think the most beautiful thing here is that God, this God, will take away sickness from you. Therefore, whatever there is sickness tonight, I'm going to confirm that sickness to leave you alone. And that sickness shall leave you alone. Do I have anybody who is sick? Raise up your hand if you are sick. I didn't say everybody. <laughs> I said those who are sick. If you are sick, raise up your hand. Then join me. Let's say to God, You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray you for so with God. Whoever curses you, this God will curse him. Whoever tries to fight you, God will cancel his program everywhere and fight for you. Sit down. Let's see the book of The book of Genesis chapter 20, verse 1 through 7. I, I want you to hear this Bible line. All those who hate you, 
who go about backbiting and slandering you. This God will fight all of them. That means you are now very dangerous. Yes, sir. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shaw and sojourned in Gera. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gera sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night. Abimelech took Abraham's wife. And God suspended everything he was doing and went after the king. This is what God will do for you. Every stone your enemy shall throw at you will now become your own stepping stone to greatness. This God will fight you every battle. Therefore, tell your enemy to stay away. Because they will not survive what God will do to them. Read on, sir. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto God him, God went to Abimelech and said unto in, in him, a dream by night and said unto him, and said unto him, Behold, huh? behold, behold, thou art but a dead man. God says to him, You are already a dead man. How many of you would like God to say this to all your enemies? Wow. Let your friends know you are not an ordinary person. Read on, sir. For the woman which thou hast taken. For the woman which thou hast taken. For she is a man's wife. <laughs> she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. You know, it's, it's very funny. Many people have interest in other people's, the, the, the wife of other people. I want you to hear me. It is not only wrong, but dangerous. And if a woman married shows interest in you, don't plead the blood of Jesus over her. I mean, over him. And don't show interest. Because you're dragging that, that young man to trouble. Read on, sir. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Abimelech Lord... Abimelech had not gone to bed with her. He said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Yes. Said he not unto me, she is my sister. Yes. And she even, she herself said, he is my brother. And in integrity of my heart, and in innocency of my hands, have I done this? And God said unto him in a dream, yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning I against me. I stopped you from going to bed with her. Therefore, therefore, suffer I thee not to touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife. Restore. If you are among those who go about thinking about another man's wife, please, God is warning you to stay away. What? Stay away. And you, if you are married, don't put any man into trouble. For God will deal with that man mercilessly. Read on, sir. For he is a prophet. He, the man you took his wife is a prophet, my prophet. And he shall pray for thee. Only he will pray for you if you must live. And thou shalt live. Yes. And if thou restore her not. If thou restore her not. No doubt that thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. Thou that, that's, that's a bad pronouncement. When God says to you, thou shalt surely die, you're already a dead man. Therefore, no matter how rich you are, no matter how smashingly and gorgeously and mesmerizingly and bewitchingly pretty this girl may be, stay away from her. Or else... The price we will pay will be too high. Read on, sir. Thou and all that are dying. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were so afraid. 
Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? What have you done? You have put us in trouble. And what have I offended thee? How have I offended that thee? That thou hast brought on me and all my kingdom a great sin. Yes. Thou hast done this deed unto me that ought not to be done. Yes. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sowest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place. And they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet, in this she is Don't let men slay your husband because of your beauty. You hear God say, I regret making you beautiful. And it is the worst thing you can hear from God. Yes, you are smashingly pretty, I know. But, don't use it as a trap to lapoon men into trouble. And you, as a young man, leave married women alone. A, a rich man in Aba fell in love with a married woman, married to a pastor. And the woman came to me and said, this one is harassing me. Tell him to leave me alone. I am a wife to a pastor. God will judge him and punish him. I called a young man and told him and talked to him and begged him to stay away. He said, uh, I didn't make her pretty. Why did God make her pretty? You know, he died a week after. And as I speak, the family is suffering because they don't have anybody to pick their bills. Right where you are this night, whatever sickness is harassing you shall be tormented this night. I am going to pray for you that this sickness may be taken away from you. Yeah. You have a part to play. Let's see the book of the book of Mark, chapter 25. Let's see verse 24 and 25. And this sign shall follow them that believe. No, 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 no. I want where demon possessed women and men. That's chapter what? Chapter 9, verse 24 and 25. He said unto them, No. Chapter 9, verse 25 and 24. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. He rebuked the foul spirit. Saying unto him, I am going to rebuke the foul spirit harassing you. <laughs> but I also need your cooperation. If you don't cooperate, that demon can continue to live in you. Yes, sir. Saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit. Thou dumb and deaf spirit. I charge thee. I charge you. Come out of him. Come out of him. And enter no when, more. When I say that from here, your role is to cooperate with God. Tell that demon to leave you alone. And that demon will leave you alone. Enough is enough. You have been harassed too long by these little spirits. This night is a night of freedom. I'm going to confront the demon that has been confronting you. If you are willing to say to that demon, leave me alone, that's all. That demon will leave you alone. It could be the, the spirit of sickness. The spirit of affliction. Whatever the enemy wants to do with you, it shall be stopped this night. <laughs> How many of you are willing to confront what confronts you on your inside? Oh, I'm happy to see so many hands. 
my pain is that so many of us don't care about what sickness does to us. You cannot befriend sickness. Sickness can even cut short your life. Sickness can kill you. But this night, I want you to confront what confronts you. And tell that spirit inside you to leave you alone. He will obey you. Because the master has spoken. Are we ready? Let me have the choir give us 12 people. As I announce to your enemies to leave you alone, the power of God will stand behind you and will force those spirits to leave you alone. Can I have 12 people? Be fast, be fast. 12 people from the choir. All of you raise up your hand. Father, everyone who has stepped out to save you at this level of responsibility, anoint him or her with power. No demon shall disobey him or her. They will obey them. And every demon shall be taken away from the place he has been hiding. What has a beginning has an end. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move. Somebody help, somebody help, somebody help. Somebody help. Workers, go and help. Don't play around. Put them down. Ask them to sleep for two minutes. Put them down and ask them to sleep. No demon will disobey you. Father, move from person to person. All those who are being tormented by the demon of poverty, by the demon of sickness, let them be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free! Every foul spirit from the families your children come from must be taken away from each person now. They have suffered more than enough. And I say enough is enough. Let them be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Thou power of God. In the name of Jesus. Move. Somebody help, somebody That's help, somebody help. That's number seven. Somebody help. How many? That's number seven. Huh? Number seven. No, there should be more than seven. Father, Father, whatever any sickness is hiding, let that sickness be disgraced. Let that sickness be taken away. Let them be taken away. Be taken away. And let them sleep for only two minutes. And they shall be made whole. Amen. Father, whoever is crying, saying, don't pass me by. Meet that person at the point of his or her needs. And let that person be set free. 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 Somebody help. 
That's Somebody number help. Nine. That's number 10. Number 10. Father, all those who are crying, saying, God, don't pass me by. Father, don't pass them by. Let the enemy, the sickness, be taken away from them. Let them be set free. 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 There are three more. Father, there are three more. Any name holding those three. Any force holding those three must now leave them alone. <laughs> on my right hand side, on my left hand side, and in front of me, those three more persons, your hour of freedom has come. Therefore, be free, be free, be free, be free. That's number one, remaining two. Remaining two. Father, whoever is eager to be set free, set him or her free. They will not go home with that sickness anymore. What has a beginning must have an end. What has gone up must come down. Set your people free and wipe away their tears. For I ask in Jesus' name. All those who know that they know they have been set free, leave your standing position and come out to the altar. Those who know that God has set them free, can you come to the altar? You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I for it song I'm 
says, I am tired of this struggle. Bless him or her with rest and peace. No demon shall go home with any one of them. I demand, dear Lord, you set your people free. And bless them with peace of mind. And it shall be so. Everyone who has stepped out here to indicate his refusal to continue to live with Satan, honor his or her prayer. And let the miracle be confirmed. Amen. Father, bless your people. Amen. Love them. Amen. Honor them. Amen. Promote them. <clears throat> For I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who know that they know that the demon that was harassing them had left them, raise up your hand. We want to count. Raise up your hand. Father, these hands rest up. They indicate and affirm and confirm that they no longer want to serve Satan. And it shall be so. Set them free from every attack. Set them free from the activities of Satan. And let the miracle of healing and salvation begin now. For I ask in Jesus' name. Father, all those who raise up their hands, may their deliverance be total and complete and implicit. Amen. Father, as they go from here, it shall be a peaceful life. Amen. These demons shall harass them no more. Amen. Shall rule them no more. Amen. Father, set them free. Amen. For I ask in Jesus' name. Very quickly, if you want to clap, clap. Don't go, don't go. Right where you are, listen to me. Right where you are, something has happened on your inside. Hear me very well. You have no place anymore for certain and his activities. Amen. You are now declared free. Amen. Jesus gave his life that you may live a great useful life. Amen. And that life starts now. Amen. As you take the Holy Communion tonight, you'll be taking it that Jesus may rule every area of your life. Amen. Satan will have no dominion. He will rule you no more. He will not direct you again. Amen. He will not give you instruction anymore. Amen. Jesus has taken over. Amen. And therefore you are free. Amen. And you are free indeed. Amen. And your freedom shall be permanent. Amen. You will not surrender that freedom again. Amen. Wherever you go, the master, Jesus, shall lead you and guide you and protect you and provide for you. He will make your life comfortable and pleasurable and successful. It shall be so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Number two, because there was no sin in the blood of Jesus, every sickness, I mean, there was no sickness in his body. As we take that Holy Communion tonight, every sickness in your body shall be destroyed. Jesus came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Beginning tonight, you will decide what Satan will do. You will rule over Satan. He will not rule over you. And everywhere you go, remember, you are going to find favor in the sight of God and the sight of man. Wherever you go, this God will fight your every battle. Amen. Never you say again, I have no one to help me. Because God has promised to be your helper. Amen. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. 
you will remain blessed. Yes, sir. All the days of your life, you will be blessed. Yes, sir. Raise up your hand. Father, everyone who has raised up his or her hand, bless him or her. Yes, May goodness and mercy follow them. Yes, May they enjoy good health and long life. Yes, May they enjoy prosperity and promotion. May they find favor in the sight of God and the sight of me. Bless them, therefore. For I ask in Jesus' name. The elders will tell you how to file out to receive your... Don't go now. When I'm talking and you're going, it shows we're all mumu. Don't go. Let me finish. Next week, Wednesday, shall be our anointing service. The anointing shall be for those who don't want to die prematurely. Those who will not die prematurely. We are going to use that oil to seal you and protect you and provide for you. You will, you will you go home for Christmas, you come back alive. Yeah. You will not die. Yeah. Prematurely. Yeah. How many of you like to live long? Wow. Come, don't make noise. Children, you are going to live long. But never you say again, I am unlucky. You are not unlucky. This God says he wants to bless you. He also wants to promote you. He, he also wants to make you somebody. And I want to declare you the treasurer of your family. <laughs> How many of you would like to be the treasurer of your family? Father, honor their, their confession. Honor what they have spoken. Yes, and they shall be treasurers of their families. Yes, In the name of the Father, yes, and of the Son, yes, and of the Holy Ghost. Yes, uh, Professor Akwebe, come and tell them.